Hello, and welcome to the GPCA podcast. I'm your host, James Brim, Executive Advisor at SIPCHEM. Today we are joining you at this year's 16th Annual GPCA Forum. The central theme of the forum this year is chemistry in action. Industry leaders are gathered here from around the world exchanging thought leadership on shaping a sustainable future. Today, I am joined by KBR's President of Technology. It is my intense pleasure to introduce Mr. Doug Kelly. Well, thank you, Doug, for joining us today. Absolutely, my pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure also to have you. So, uh, considering this is the forum's first year in Saudi, mm -hmm. what's your impressions? And uh, I think it's, you know, we're entering the last day tomorrow. Uh, what are some of your key takeaways? I've just been amazed by all of the things that have been discussed, uh, you know, in this in this uh, energy transition space. There are so many answers to the the question of how do we, you know, navigate this energy transition. And you know, some people think about it as decarbonization. Others think about it as, you know, green hydrogen, green ammonia. Others think about carbon capture, utilization, and storage. And then. Then others think about electrification, and and from my view, it's really going to be all of the above that that addresses. But it's been it's been very thought provoking, and and the conversations that have taken place have have stretched my mind as well. I've been able to to think about things from a different perspective, which I think is one of the valuable uh, aspects of the GPCA conference. Well, Doug, I think I must agree. Um, the forum has been interesting, mm -hmm. and what's even more interesting is considering KBR. Had, you know their activity in the region, um, being one of the top engineering and technology partners, mm -hmm. and not just in the region but, but globally. Um, you know, you guys have been very active. What is your perception of the GCC as far as what opportunities and what are some of the risks uh, that, that we're facing? So, good question. I, I look at the, the GCC companies and the, the history that KBR, the rich history that KBR has with, with the GCC companies, and, we, and fortunately we've been able to uh, participate in many major projects over the years, and we have a presence here in, in Saudi, we have a significant presence over, over time. And so as I, as I look at um, the opportunity that is uh, ahead for the GCC companies around energy transition, there are a lot of benefits and lots of advantages that they have uh, that really will allow them, you know, this region to be leaders in, in clean energy and, and energy transition. I, I think there's many reasons for that. One of them is, uh, you know, the low natural gas cost is really going to allow, um, you know, the, the, the very rapid and, and low cost implementation of blue ammonia, blue hydrogen, which is key. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, experience in the region around carbon capture, utilization, and storage, which is a really key part of, of decarbonization. And then, you know, the energy companies that are in the region have infrastructure, they have pipelines, they have capabilities that go hand in hand and, and are uh, maybe not the exciting parts of decarbonization and, and uh, energy transition, but are critically important. And then there's a history of innovation here in the region. I mean, if I look at uh, the companies we worked at, with over the years, you know, there's been tremendous challenges, both technology challenges and operation challenges, but in working together, uh, innovation and, and you know, develop, developing and deploying new technologies has really been standout. And because of all those reasons, I feel very confident that the GCC region and the companies that operate here are going to be seen as leaders, not only in the region, but globally. Yeah, I think you mentioned the key point, which is technology. Mm -hmm. uh, as a technology company, above anything else, what is the role of technology? Um, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, I think it goes back to my comment on innovation earlier. I think that uh, technology companies in and of themselves can't develop the right solutions to address all of these needs. It really is going to take collaboration with operating companies. Uh, just this week, I've spent a lot of time with some of the leaders of a lot of the companies in, in the region, understanding what their technology needs are, understanding what their priorities are. And a result, as a result, I can go back into my organization and really focus, you know, where are we going to develop new technologies? What capabilities do uh, our clients need in order to uh, accomplish their energy transition goals? And, and a lot of those are, are new technologies, new developments, but some are just innovative ideas 
uh, that technology companies can provide in, in collaboration with operation companies with traditional uh, operations that are already on the ground. So it's very exciting, very dynamic space right now. Yes, yeah, I think, and you mentioned capabilities, and mm -hmm. we know that technology alone is not enough yep. to reach the net zero reality, mm -hmm. um, and there are other enablers. Uh, such as process, regulations, mm -hmm. workforce enablement, training, um, investment. Um, but I guess considering that, um, where do you see the, indus the industry's effort to move towards a decarbonization net zero effort? Well, it's truly a team sport. I think that uh, one of the things that's become clear is technology companies and operating companies alone can't address all these challenges. It takes uh, governments, it takes banks, it takes financing, it takes, you know, you know, innovation and uh, energy transition doesn't come for free. So it's going to take the collaborative minds and uh, of a large organization. Specifically, you know, I see the, um, the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States, uh, which is a government policy, has really spurred the industry has spurred technology companies to, to deploy energy transition uh, solutions more quickly. And so that's just one example. Uh, in India, they've, they've got some policies around uh, you know, where the renewable energy is put in the grid, they can take it out wherever it's needed. And so, so those sound like relatively, li well, there's a lot of money being spent in the US, but in India, it's, it's a relatively simple policy change, but it, it enables you know, projects to be developed more quickly. And so I see that as an opportunity for the region to really collaborate between governments and policies, operating companies' needs and developments and, and, and really come up and, and, and accelerate the transition that we're talking about today. Yeah, I think that it kind of coins the term a strong neighborhood. Absolutely. It takes and, a strong indeed. neighborhood. It does indeed. Um, but I guess considering we're in Saudi Arabia currently, mm -hmm. Uh, here at the annual GPCA forum, what what projects do you have in Saudi, and can you elaborate mm -hmm. a little bit about some of your business plans? Okay, absolutely. It's a it's very uh, important region and important country to us. We've had a long term presence in, in Saudi and Kingdom, and uh, right now some of those uh, advantages that I, I mentioned earlier are particularly applicable here in, in the Kingdom, especially around low cost natural gas and as I look at the projects that we're already you know working with companies like Aramco and, and Sabic around blue ammonia you know KBR is one of the the market leaders in ammonia historically and we and we have a blue ammonia process which you know really couples together low natural gas feedstocks along with you know the technology that we have to offer which is, is really just a low you know when I say blue ammonia it's a low carbon solution for for ammonia and where ammonia has historically been uh, focused on fertilizer production predominantly, yeah. Yeah. now we're looking at ammonia as a fuel source uh, you know, for export to Japan and other countries that are really looking at uh, using ammonia as a fuel, ammonia as energy. And so we're working with you know, pretty much all of the, the, the projects that have been announced in Kingdom uh, for blue ammonia. The other areas around uh, olefins, the chemicals, petrochemicals production, uh, we, we have a long history in um, specifically olefins and, and uh, some of our technologies. And we're working, you know, all of the announcements around uh, new chemicals, you know, major chemical facilities were involved with, with all of the countries, in, in, or excuse me, all of the companies in, in the kingdom in order to address their needs and to support their projects in any way that we can. Well, your, your portfolio seems quite interesting. Um, you know, what are some other key innovation and technology projects that you're working on uh, that would really help push and advance the clean energy transformation? Very good question. If you look at, um, in addition to blue ammonia, as I just talked about, the, the circular economy, the, the, the plastics recycling technology, we partnered with a, a company called Mura Technology based out of the UK, have an exclusive arrangement with them. We think it's a better mousetrap. It's a better approach to plastics recycling. That's particularly exciting. Uh, the traditional way of recycling plastics is basically just to heat up the plastics. So it's, it's very energy intensive and because you're heating it externally, those plastics break down, but they kind of break down too much. They form char, which is 
not the desired product. Mm -hmm. So the approach that we use through our partnership with Mira Technologies uses supercritical water, and that's a, that's a fancy chemical engineering way to say really high temperature, really high pressure water. Mm -hmm. But the value of having that water impart the energy to the plastics to break it down is the water actually coats the molecules. It doesn't break all the way down into that char, so it has a higher um, a higher yield, a higher, um, you know, of the desired products that, that you need. The other point is the water can be recycled. So if you do it once through firing, uh, you know, that takes a lot of energy, has a high carbon footprint, which is exactly not what we want to do. Yes, so yes. being able to use the water, recycle it backwards, you know, back into the process for feed uh, to the process really allows us to be more energy efficient. And, and so that's an exciting technology area. And I could go into a lot of detail on all the areas, but just at a high level, you know, biofuels, biochemicals, uh, 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 new, new ways of capturing the carbon and sequestering it and using or, or uh, uh, utilizing it in other ways uh, very creatively. Those are all areas that we're looking at uh, in order to help our clients, not only in Kingdom, but around the world to address their needs. Wow, you guys yeah. are definitely very busy. We have, um, we're having a lot of fun, actually. It's a fun time to be in this industry. That's good, that's yes. good. I, I think, uh, man, we, we, we covered so much. Uh, well, thank you for your insight and perspectives. If it's okay, I would like to recap a few of the key points. Absolutely. Uh, that, that you touched on. It sounds like energy transformation is very important in the total aspects of all aspects of it. Uh, secondly, the GCC seems well positioned to be a leader in this area. Indeed. And thirdly, it's a team sport. And <laughs> as Doug said, this requires collaboration and coordination across the entire value chain. Thank you, Doug, Indeed. for your time today. And we look forward to engaging with you more. Absolutely, my pleasure, James. It's a pleasure meeting you. And you as well. All right, take care. And to our listeners out there, stay tuned to the next episode of the GPCA podcast where we will continue to engage in thought leadership at this year's 16th annual GPCA Forum. And on behalf of the GPCA, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining. We know you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. Mm -hmm.